Hello, Serge here from the Backyard Driving Range. Have a question that came into customer service, and this one's uh, submitted by Ross Peterson. And Ross says, Hi, Serge. I have been a Sergeite since starting this wonderful game about two and a half years ago. I had always used an interlock grip from the start. Interlock is where you take your index finger of your top hand, in my case the left hand, and intertwine or put the, the in your, your little finger of the bottom hand, which would be my right hand, in between, and it, that's the reason why they call it interlock, because they're interlocked. Some good players use that grip. Jack Nicholas for one, and Tiger Woods uses it. So uh, it's definitely a, a, a very viable grip. Uh, it's a very good, we recommend it for players with small fingers, small hands and small fingers, short fingers, I should say. And, uh, uh, and whether, it doesn't matter what you got, if you try it, and it works and you like it, then, then, then go for it. So again, Ross says that he has always used an interlock grip from the start. Recently I switched and started playing, laying the pinky on top. That's what we call the overlap. So instead of going in between, you just leave that, you leave your, your top hand in, pointer finger on the club, so you got all four fingers on the club now. In this way, in case you only have your bottom three fingers, which is the ones we squeeze with, to, to uh, on both hands. So now you've got four, you have four fingers on, on, on the grip, and you just take that pinky, instead of putting it in between, you lay it on top, and that's what they call an overlap, all right? It really seemed to improve my driver, but, I, but it had quite an ill effect on my irons. I was slicing and pushing everything to the right. I did not realize that it may have that effect until just a couple of nights ago when I decided to go back and try interlocking again. Instantly I was back to straight with a nice little draw and my normal distance. Just wondering why this may have happened. Thanks for, your, for the help. Sincerely again, Ross Peterson. Okay, Ross, I think this, it, this could most simply be stated that, that I think it's a combination of probably two things. Number one, uh, it changed your pressure points of the grip in your hand. Even if you stayed with a nice uh, pounds perpendicular to the ground grip, the one we call a 3P grip, pounds perpendicular to the ground, uh, perpendicular to the aiming line, and perpendicular to your torso, so you have, you have all, all uh, uh, three perpendicular relationships there. That's why I called it the 3P grip. And, uh, and, and, and it changed probably the pressure points, and it just changes the feeling, and I think without a doubt, it, it can definitely change the rotation in the catcher's mitten up the tree, and, and, and most importantly for why you started fading it, it very likely changed your release into impact. And, and, and in, in the case of, of when, you, uh, when you first switched back and, and the iron started fading, uh, when you had the overlap grip as compared to your interlock, I think the problem there was very, had to be simply a case that, that it actually slowed your release down, because if you were hitting fades in, 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 in uh, blocks or whatever, uh, everything to the right, that meant the club was not coming in square. So, uh, grip's really an important thing, and as we say, uh, the setup determines the motion. There are the four major aspects of setup are grip, stance, posture, and alignment. And the reason why grip is so important is because of the fact that, that when we swing our arms, and we can only swing them in front of our body, they always come back to perpendicular or what I like to call diametric, diametrically opposed to each other directly in front. Sort of like shaking hands, like you can shake hands with somebody. We always just take our hand and it goes out like that. We don't go like this or like that or, or whatever. Even if you go sideways, both ways to shake hands with somebody behind you and you don't even turn, the hands go out and they're always perpendicular to the ground. When they swing in front of your body, they always stay perpendicular to the ground. So, as I call it, rule number two is the palms must remain perpendicular to the ground throughout the swing, which when they're perpendicular forward, as I'm standing here, say the ball, I'm going to hit this ball into the net right there, when I'm swinging like this, the hands, as I go in and catch his mid-toe up, they're perpendicular to the ground, but the, shall we say, the, 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 my right palm, the lower hand, would be facing the target on that side, and then it would have released through, and it's now facing away from the target on this side. Excuse me, not the target, I'm talking the camera. Let's get this straight. The target's out there, so, so I'm perpendicular to the camera lens, perpendicular to my body, perpendicular to the aiming line, all right? And so when I take it back in the catcher's mitt, my, my lower palm, my right hand, is actually now parallel to the aiming line and now perpendicular to the camera and vice versa when I go to that side for every action there's a re equal and opposite reaction in the catcher's mid toe up here palm facing the camera and the catcher's mid toe up on that side palm facing away from the camera but they're still perpendicular to the ground until I swing all the way up and finish which from this view would be all the way up and finish 
and they're staying perpendicular to the ground. So the point becomes, I think without a doubt, you change the pressure points, you change your, and it changed your, your, the, the, the way each hand was working in comparison or, or in unity with each other. And I think that when you, when you uh, went to the interlock, it had to have slowed down your hands and especially your lower hand. And I'm assuming if you're right-handed, it slowed down your right hand. And, and with the club coming in, on, 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 but not square to the aiming line, but rather open to the aiming line, that's where your pushes and, and your slices came from. So uh, I, I think going back, you just got, the, you got back to the feeling you've been accustomed to from the, from the time that you started playing golf, and, and uh, it just brought back the right pressure points, the right feeling, the right timing to get the impact, and you started squaring the club up again, and if you square the club up and rotate toe up in the catcher's mitt, you can even, that'll even stop putting a little right to left spin on the ball, which will give you some, which will give you a drawback. So I think that, that that would be the main issue. Now ironically, for me, I'm just the opposite. I've always played with the overlap grip all my life, but usually I, I found that any time I need to have the ball really move left to right, which for me would be a, a power fade to even, and even having to slice it, like get up on, I'm gonna, especially with woods, and it even works with the irons, but even better with the woods. If I wanna, if I need the ball to really power right, like uh, curve it around a dog leg corner, I didn't hit it far enough, but I really have to curve a long iron or a fairway wood around a corner, or it's a severe dog leg right uh, tee shot, and, and, and I really gotta curve it, I do, I do just the opposite. I go from my normal overlap grip and I interlock it and whoosh, that's like, that's like guaranteed, put, put, you can just lay a bet on it, that ball's gonna go whoosh, and slice for me. So I actually, like I said, I, I, I really don't ever really believe in changing grips and I only change it when I need a severe slice, but I just go to that, I go to an interlock, but I'm still keeping my palms perpendicular to the ground. The, the, I'm holding the, uh, the, the club in the same point, uh, pressure points as the, in the fingers that I do as a regular shot, but I just go from overlap to interlock, and I got like in instant guaranteed power, power fade to pretty good power slice if I need it. Sometimes I might have to open up the face a little bit more to really get the curve, but I'm just the opposite, and, and so uh, I think it does have to do with the fact that Everything feels a little different, the head feels different in the hands, the pressure points, and you add up all of those things together, and it changes the timing a little bit at impact. So instead of coming in square at impact to going toe up in the forward mid, it tends to come in open and doesn't go into the and doesn't go and, and that's what very likely go straight through with the with the face with the toe facing out rather than going toe up into the mid, and you're gonna open up the right instead of having your normal straight to a little draw. So I think that's the reason. So again, now you know that uh, uh, possibly if you need the ball to go to the right, just as I do, you you can you can just do the opposite of me. Instead of going from overlap to interlock, you're going to go from interlock to overlap, and you got that shot to the right guaranteed. And so uh, that might be a good thing to remember. And, and again, all of you out there, if you if you have trouble working one ball one way or another, you might try that with your grip. But remember, we're never changing the perpendicularness of the palms to the ground. All right, because that's going to give us the guarantee of coming back to impact. Just. See if, if, uh, if it changes your sensitivity, your, your touch, your tempo, to, and your timing to do everything with the club at impact, it can make a change in how that you can hit the ball the opposite way of what you normally do. And so it uh, might be something to toy with, but you don't ever toy with the palms perpendicular to the ground throughout the swing, because that's, that's the only thing that will guarantee you what's happening at impact. And, and, and again, in this case, if it slows it down a little bit at impact, it'll open up for right-handers, the, uh, the, the right side to hit the ball's curving to the right, and uh, vice versa for lefties, and so uh, that's a, that's an aspect to possibly look at. But that's a that's a really unusual question. That's the first time I've ever run across that. And 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 in reality, it's a really good question, and it gives us another thing to toy with to see if there's some way that we can improve our, our ball striking, or I should say, our, our shot making in terms of shaping the shot uh, to uh, help us do that more in a consistent manner and learn exactly how much certain things give us the exact amount of curve we're looking for. All right, so just with this kind of, uh, I guess we might say this is a quite unusual way to handle something, but if it works and, it, and, and you can play with it successfully, it gives you another weapon in your arsenal of shot making to shoot lower scores. That's it for the search for today, and I'll be talking to you all again soon.